Okay, I wanted to quickly say before I start, 3DS Max is pretty awesome, but it is crazy complicated and it takes way too long to figure out. I shouldn't say way too long, but it takes a long time and it's really frustrating. So, uh, whoever's out there, um, if you start learning 3DS Max and get frustrated, don't give up because you'll get there eventually. And once you're there, it's incredibly useful. You'll use it forever. As long as you're doing game design, it is pretty much what you have to use if you want to keep going forward. Um, so, yep, good luck. Hopefully this is helpful. Okay, so what we're going to do first is give you a sort of crash course for all the uh, controls in 3DS. So to do that, we're going to make a box. Uh, when you open 3DS, over here in the right, there's a, uh, a couple options here. We're going to click box. And to make sure that it lines up to the grid um, instead of what it does naturally, we're going to click this button up here, snaps toggle. Um, and I'll give you this blue square here. And we'll make sure that whatever you do, you snap to the toggle. And we'll just go ahead and make a 2x2x2 two by two by two box. Click it again, take it off, because I find it annoying when I'm trying to work. Um, to get around the viewport here, you're going to do the middle mouse button. You can click it and move your mouse to scroll and pan, I should say, to pan around your object. Uh, you can roll it in and out to scroll. Um, and then if you want to rotate around, you press Alt and click in your middle button, your middle mouse button. And that'll let you rotate around your object like so. Um, besides that, if you want to move your object, you can look up here. You have three main options. Select and move, rotate, and scale. Uh, move is pretty straightforward. You can move it like so. Select the direction you'd like to move. Or you can move on a plane by clicking one of these squares that appears between the lines. Um, and you can use any of those. It'll stay locked on that plane no matter what. If you, ha if you have uh, that held down. Um, I'm pressing Control Z to move it back to the middle. Next one is Rotate. Same as uh, the Move tool. Move on the uh, planes like that. Just whenever you have mouse over one of these and it turns yellow, you know you have it selected. Or you can click anywhere outside, I mean anywhere inside the circle, but not on one of the lines to free rotate. Next one is uh, scale. You can scale on each axis, Y, X, and Z. Or you can click in the very middle to scale as a whole. Or in one of the outside circles to scale on a plane. So this is the uh, Z, Y, I mean so the Z, X, this is the Z, Y, this is the Z, the X, Y. And you can see that the Z plane is not getting any bigger or smaller when I do this stays the same height. Um, next thing you want to do is go over to the modify tab up here next to the create tab that you start in. Right click your object and edible poly is the one you want to choose. This will let you uh, get access to the four main selection types and that is vertex, edge, polygon, and element. Um, I'm going to go ahead and switch from smooth and highlights over here at the top left hand corner of the viewport to hidden line. You can see all the polys a little more clearly. I like to do that when I'm working. Um, vertex will select, let me go back to the move tool. It will select each obviously uh, point where you have intersecting lines. Um, you can control click with any of these selection tools to select multiple points. And the transform gizmo will move itself to be in the middle of them. Next one is the uh, edge tool, obviously select edges again you can press control to select multiple edges um, don't use this border one I don't use it it's not very useful from what I've seen um, in fact I'm not even quite sure what it does so don't mess with it for now unless you find out it's amazing uh, in which case let me know uh, the polygon tool selects surfaces or faces of your object you can control click to select or deselect multiple objects or multiple faces and finally element will select the entire object all of the faces and uh, that's helpful for when you have several objects in your scene 
Okay, so you've got your box and you want to make it a little more detailed so you can actually make some shapes out of it. Um, there are three main ways that I like to do this. Uh, I'll show them to you now. The first one, go ahead and do the polygon selection to choose one of the faces of your box. Um, up here on the top, there are three tabs, graphite modeling, freeform, and selection. This one's in the graphite modeling. Um, it's over to the right, tessellate. Uh, you can click that once and it will subdivide your box or your surface into four uh, separate surfaces. Be careful with this tool because if you click it too many times, you'll end up with like 20,000 polys and your computer will crash. Um, so there you go, you've got your four surfaces there. That's a good way to add detail. Another way up here in the same area is this swift loop tool. Click it to activate and then you can click and it will add a, uh, a line through your object. This one's a little bit hit or miss sometimes, but it should usually work. Um, you can click it again to deselect or right click twice. Third one is cut up here. I hope you saw me click that. You can click two edges to make a line between them or two edges or an edge and surface, any combination you like. Um, and that will that'll divide it up a little bit. If you just want to add one or two more lines into something you're working on, that's the best way. Another couple of tools that are very useful when you're making more detail are the uh, extrude and uh, inset tools. They can be found down here below the, your selection options. Uh, extrude, basically you select a surface, click and drag it, it will extrude it. It'll, it'll make an extra set of faces here and make your side go out from where it was before. You can also extrude inward, but be careful because uh, there's no buffer here. That's that's poly directly on top of a poly. And it'll cause some Z fighting, depending on the game engine you're using. Um, another one, if you want to be, if you don't want to extrude this entire face, just part of it, uh, you can do the inset button, the inset tool, I should say, and that will do what it says. It'll inset, make a a smaller face inside the face you're working with, and from there you can extrude that. So you just have some of the uh, face coming out, or you can just modify it however you'd like. It's worth noting that both of these tools have setting options next to them so that you can do them more specific, specifically with a slider type option. Um, and each of these tools I'll show you here can be done with multiple faces. For instance, extrude, you can extrude more than one face, or you can inset more than one face. Um, and you can use those in combination. They will they'll come in very handy. Smoothing groups. Um, smoothing groups are what tells the lighting that two edges don't have an, a hard connection. Um, so you can see here, uh, even when we're rendering, that there are sharp edges everywhere. If we want some of these edges to be a little smoother, uh, we can select with the face tool. We'll select two faces that we want to blend together a little better and scroll down in the same box as the selection options until you see this whole uh, list of numbers. Uh, select two faces and select one of the numbers and that will smooth out that smooth out that connection. So you can see now there's no hard edge in between here. Um, and that's good when you're trying to make low poly uh, bins, circles that you want to smooth together without that hard edge. It's worth noting that in Unreal Tournament, every single surface needs to have a smoothing group or else it'll cause lighting issues. So if you want to have two surfaces right next to each other without having them blend into in each other, you can just select the, the, uh, the adjacent surface and choose a different smoothing group. Then they won't interf uh, interfere with each other, but they'll both have smoothing surfaces apply to them and you can't really see here but I don't know if I pull this up at all you can see it's trying to smooth that out there's no hard edge um, and obviously this only does so much but it's good in a pinch okay I thought I'd also hit on texturing and UVW unwrapping real quickly UVW unwrapping is easy um, but it is how you texture your models and it can be tedious and sort of frustrating uh, I'm going to do a quick little run over because I know there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube um, that probably explain it much better than I could. So first off, when you open 3DS, you got a block that you've just made. To texture it, um, you're going to want to go to 
Editable Poly.